Anytime you invest in a dividend stock, you're making an assumption that the company will continue to pay dividends in the future. When it comes to dividend aristocrats and 50 plus year dividend kings, you should never have to worry about the dividend. So what the is going on with Stanley Black & Decker, ticker symbol SWK. 2022 has not been kind to them and free cash flow has dropped like a rock. What's going on? What's the issue? Should we be concerned about the safety of the dividend? And most importantly, should you buy this dividend king? So I've actually had Stanley Black & Decker on my radar for a while now because this dividend stock is on a deep discount compared to its historical average five-year dividend yield. However, I've kind of stopped short and moved on to other stocks when I look at their payout ratio based on free cash flow. Historically, it's been really low. However, in the trailing 12 months, it has popped way high. In fact, so high that they actually don't have any free cash flow right now. Super big warning sign, and every time I've seen it, I've just moved on to other dividend stocks. But I got a question in the Patreon community from one of the members of the Discord chat asking about SWK and whether it was a good dividend stock to sell options on. And this ultimately ended up being the push I needed to really dive deep on SWK and understand what is really going on here. Ordinarily, when we see dividend stocks with 5, 7, 10 years, even 15 to 20 years of consecutive dividend payments, and I see a dividend payout ratio that's sky high, or there is no free cash flow, I'm content with moving on because these dividend stocks has not shown me anything real. But Stanley Black & Decker is a little bit different. They've been paying consecutive and increasing dividends now every year for 55 consecutive years, which makes them a dividend king. That is a strong and established dividend history that you can't take lightly. And when we look at the historical free cash flow per share, we notice that it's very stable, all the way back from 2012, all the way through December of 2021. But here's the problem. Really stable and consistent free cash flow, 2015 all the way through 2021, very stable, very consistent, except for this number right here. This is for the trailing 12 months. The free cash flow went from 7.92 per share to negative, that's right, negative $11.80 per share in the trailing 12 months. That is a catastrophic difference. On its face, it seems like a massive warning that this dividend stock is not really generating enough cash flow to pay the dividend. So I dug deep, I did my research, I went ahead and listened to a full Q3 2022 earnings call from the company and I figure out what the problem was. You see, Stanley Black & Decker is a maker of power tools, both industrial and for the average Joe out there. In fact, they're the number one world leader in the tools industry with many different brands, including DeWalt, Black & Decker, Craftsman, Irwin, Lennox, Stanley, Bostitch, Mac Tools, Porter Cable, and more. And then there are their outdoor brands, including DeWalt, Cub Cadet, Hustler, Rover, Troy Built, Craftsman, etc. Number one power tool company in the world. However, as many of you know, over the past two to three years, there's been a severe supply chain crisis. And many companies have found it difficult to get the supplies that they need in order to produce the products that they sell to the public. And because they manufacture a lot in China and dealing with this supply chain issue, Stanley Black & Decker made a strategic decision. They were gonna prioritize their inventory. And well, time has not been kind to this decision. The answer is in the financials, specifically the balance sheet. Inventory is part of the balance sheet because it is an asset. It is a product that you have invested in that you have not yet sold. We're looking at the historical inventories right here. We've got raw materials, work in process, and finished goods and merchandise. And you notice that when we look at total inventory size here from 2017 all the way through 2021 and 2022, You'll notice very stable numbers here. We got $2 billion in 2017, $2.3 billion in 2018, $2.25 billion in 2019, $2.7 billion in 2020, and then 2021 we see a catastrophic increase. $5.44 billion in total inventories, primarily finished goods and merchandise at $3.5 billion. Companies like Stanley Black & Decker rely on their ability to not only make quality products but also then sell them. And when you have a lot of inventory that you don't sell due to demand that has dropped off here in 2021 and 2022, we have a problem. We have a lot of money tied up that we can't get rid of. And that is how free cash flow blew up in the trailing 12 months. I don't think there's a better way to put it than to look at this chart right here. 
This is tracking our inventory levels compared to free cash flow starting in 2017 through the most recent trailing 12 months. And things start out swimmingly from 2017 through 2020. Then 2021 starts to get a little bit dicey. We see that there's a big pop in inventory followed by a lot less free cash flow than normal. And then it's compounded by the final result, the trailing 12 months, primarily 2022. Still bloated inventory due to lower demand and a high focus on inventory and a lot less cash being generated by the business because we've got all this inventory stuck, not moving. I get it. I, I get that it was important for them to focus on inventory given the fact that demand at the time was strong and there was a massive supply chain crisis with China, which is where the majority of their manufacturing is held. So this is the problem and it's a very clear problem. The big question here is what is the management team over at Stanley Black & Decker doing about this? What is their strategy to unwind this mess? And to do that, I listened to the entirety of this Stanley Black & Decker Q3 2022 earnings call because I figured I bet you they're gonna talk a lot about inventory and free cash flow. And I was right. I think there's a lot of value to be taken out of some of these earnings calls. Listening to management's focus, what is their priorities? How much do they care about the safety of the dividend? Is it a priority of the business? And how do they tackle challenges in the marketplace? The takeaway I had from listening to this earnings call was there's a massive focus on inventory and they are purposefully producing less right now to unwind that inventory. Secondly, they did divest some of their subsidiaries and they used those proceeds to actually pay down quite a bit of debt, $3 billion. They have an intense focus on capital efficiency, reducing their inventory and generating cash flow. Because like I've always said on this channel, when it comes to dividend safety, what's critical is not net income or earnings, but free cash flow. So as we come back to our spreadsheet here, when we look at Stanley Black & Decker, yes, they're in a cash flow crisis right now, but they're also a massively large company that generates a lot of cash every single year. Stanley Black & Decker has taken a massive hit in the marketplace when it comes to their share price. Back in April of last year, February, two years ago, we were at $191 per share. And since then, we have dropped all the way down to $73.29 per share, which when we come back here, we can see is a 47% discount based on their historical average five-year dividend yield. Historically, they've paid about a 2.24% yield. And right now, we're at 4.19%. So at the end of the day, when I look at dividend safety, I think to myself, this is not a risk-free play like we think about some dividend aristocrats and some dividend kings. Yes, Stanley Black & Decker's management team is hyper-focused on generating cash flow, and it looks like they have the right focus and they will continue to generate free cash flow and work through their inventory crisis. So given that, the question becomes, do you trust that Stanley Black & Decker will continue to pay a dividend? If this is a company that only had a five to 10 year streak, even 15 to 20 years, this is a non-starter for me. But again, remember, this is a company that has been paying increasing dividends every single year now for 55 consecutive years, and that matters. So for me, I've decided it's worth the risk for a portion, a segment of my portfolio. And as you can see right here, I did initiate a position in Stanley Black & Decker in my own cash flow portfolio of 100 shares worth $7,329. This is about as large of a position I'm going to create in the portfolio. It makes up about 4.7%. And I went ahead and immediately, as you can see, sold a covered call with a strike price of $80, which expires on January 20th, 2023. Now, SWK only pays monthly options, so I decided to be a little bit more conservative here since I have to go with 30-day options. This was a 20 delta, and the likelihood of it being at or above $80 is low, in my opinion. Does this mean that I feel confident recommending SWK to you? Absolutely not. I think there is risk in this dividend play, more so than I take with other positions in the portfolio. But what I'm looking at is, strong dividend payment history, and their management team is hyper-focused on fixing the cash flow problem, which is the core of dividend safety. At the end of the day, I'm saying to myself, I think this dividend is safe and it's going to be continue to be paid and be raised in the future. This is also a dividend stock with a really healthy dividend growth rate at 12.9%, 6.2%, 6.4% and 6.8% over the past one, three, five, and 10 years. And it's got a really great dividend yield right now of 4.19%, much higher than you've gotten historically with this stock. Hopefully you found some value in this video and taking a deep dive here to understand what happens 
when free cash flow goes negative and helping to troubleshoot and problem solve why these things happen. Remember that I respond to all comments that I receive on the day I post a video and make sure to check out the Patreon community and the Discord chat. There's a link down in the description below. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas.